Intel is back, if you haven't noticed. All the Lake takes the gaming crown over Zen 3 with a 10% lead, but for me the most interesting question was how the new DDR5 memory performs and should you actually choose it over DDR4? Some people think there is an easy answer, but I think it's a more complex question. If you are interested in which RAM you should choose for your new 12th gen Intel CPU, then this video is for you. After some basics about DDR5, I will explain three important things to keep in mind when choosing the proper memory for your system. First one is money, then there's platform progression, and then the last one is your own personal enjoyment of new technologies. <laughs> First we need to get some basics out of the way. Alder Lake supports both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, but the main board you buy is the actual deciding factor on which memory you have to use. If your motherboard supports DDR4 then you also have to buy DDR4 and if your motherboard supports DDR5 then you have to buy DDR5. So no matter what your final decision will be, always make sure that your motherboard matches the memory. Second. DDR5 differs a lot from the previous DDR versions. There are changes to the memory ranks, to the burst modes, and instead of one 64-bit channel, DDR5 now has two independent 32-bit links. Linus Tech Tips has a really interesting video going into all the nitty-gritty details, and if you're interested in that, make sure to check out the video. I put a link down in the description below. The gist is that so far you could just use a single simple formula to calculate the memory latency and that was a pretty good indication on how it would perform in latency dependent applications like game. You take the cast latency, multiply it by 2000 and then divide it by the effective memory clock. So for example a DDR4 32000 kit with CL14 you would take 14 times 2000 divided by 3200 which results in 8.75 nanoseconds of latency. If you compare that to a DDR5 4800 kit with CL40, you soon realize that there is a big difference in the actual calculated latency. Because if you take 40 times 2000 and divide it by 4800, the nanoseconds latency would be 16.66. That's almost twice as much. But if you watch the reviews of Alder Lake and a lot of them compare DDR5 to DDR4, you soon realize there isn't actually that much of a difference and sometimes DDR5 can actually be faster. So why is it that DDR4 offers much better latencies on paper, but DDR5 still keeps up? The reason for this are all these changes that I talked about previously, because they're not part of the equation, literally. DDR5 is able to reduce its latency through all this new technology that just doesn't show up in the numbers. And then there's one more thing to consider when you talk about Alder Lake and different memory types. And that's the memory controller speed and the specific gear modes. Back with Rocket Lake, Intel introduced different gear modes that have an effect on how fast the integrated memory controller actually clocks compared to the memory you use. If you use gear 1, the memory controller clocks with the actual clock speed of your memory kit, and if you use gear 2, it clocks with half of that. So as an example, a DDR4-3200 kit has an actual clock speed of 1600 MHz and at gear 1 that means that the integrated memory controller in Alder Lake also clocks with 1600 MHz. If you compare it to a DDR5-4800 kit which has an actual clock speed of 2400 MHz but you have to use gear 2 that means the integrated memory controller only clocks at 1200 MHz which is quite a bit lower than what it would clock at if you use DDR4-3200. In conclusion, if you want your DDR5 kit to run at the same integrated memory clock speed as a DDR4-3200 kit, you would have to use a DDR5-6400 kit. As you see, DDR5 being really new right now has a lot of disadvantages. There are only low clock speed kits available, you have to run the memory controller at lower gear levels and lower speeds, but it's still keeping up and in some cases even outperforming DDR4. The German website PC Games Hardware did some extreme testing where they were running games while at the same time stressing the memory system and DDR5 greatly outperformed DDR4 here. That just shows how important and how effective the new approaches of DDR5 are and actually I'm really excited about it and especially what will come in the future. Now with the basics out of the way, let's get to the gist of it. That's what you're all here for. Which memory should you choose for your system? As I said in the beginning, there are three aspects to it. Money, platform progression and personal enjoyment of tech. Let's start with money first. And this one is pretty simple. If you have a specific budget and DDR5 doesn't fit into it, 
then go with DDR4. But what if you have the money but aren't sure if you should spend it? The performance seems pretty comparable. Why pay $300 for a 32GB DDR5 kit if you can get a 32GB DDR4 kit for less than half than that? And while that's a valid argument, I would like to open your point of view towards a system inclusive approach. Let's look at two examples. System number one would be a completely new build with a $650 i9-12900K, a $350 C690 motherboard combined with a $180 AIO, a $250 PCI Express Gen 4 SSD, maybe a $2000 RTX 3080 graphics card, a $200 case and a $200 PSU. Now the question is, should you get the $150 DDR4 kit or should you spend the $300 for the DDR5 kit? And again, if you compare them kit versus kit, it doesn't really make sense to spend almost twice as much for similar performance. But if you look at the total system cost, which will be way over $4,000 in that case, then the extra $150 don't make that much of a difference anymore, right? But on the other hand, if you already have most of your system and you're just looking to upgrade your CPU, mainboard and RAM, for example, with a $330 i5-12600K, a $200 C690 motherboard and the additional memory, then the $150 difference has a lot more impact on your choice. So for the money aspect, my advice would be to take the whole system into account and not just compare kits to different kits. If you think about the whole system costs, DDR5 might make a lot more sense than you think. The next point is platform progression. And this is a really individual aspect. There are people who build a new system and then use the same system unchanged for four, five, six, or many more years. And the more powerful your system is from the get go, the less important upgrades are to you. If you're building a system with a i9 2900K and 64 gigabytes of DDR4, I mean, you're probably set for the next couple of years. You don't even need to look into changing the system. But let's say you're buying a i5 2600K with 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Suddenly, your outlook is a little bit different. Let's say in a year or two, you start to edit 4K YouTube videos because you started a YouTube channel and you want to upgrade your memory to 64 gigabytes, for example. By then, DDR5 memory probably is a lot faster and cheaper than DDR4. So now you want to upgrade and you're stuck with DDR4, while you could be buying faster, better and cheaper DDR5. It's the same issue with CPU performance. Let's say in one or two years, you want to upgrade to a faster CPU and the new Meteor Lake or Raptor Lake CPUs look mighty fine. Well, even if Intel is still supporting your C690 motherboard, you wouldn't be able to upgrade because most likely those new CPUs would have ditched the old DDR4 memory controller and only support DDR5. I can give you the final answer here because only you know if you're someone who never touches the system or if you're already planning on upgrading to a 3900K and 128 gigabytes of DDR5 10,000. Choosing DDR4 over DDR5 will have impacts on the upgradability of your system or maybe not, depending on your use case. Also, let me know down in the comments if you're someone who always tinkers with the system or if you're more of a never change a running system person. And last but certainly not least is your personal enjoyment of tech. Are you a gamer who just cares about the highest FPS and it doesn't really matter to you which system is running it? Well then go for the best price performance. But if you're anything like me, sometimes being an early adopter and paying for the newest, the latest and the greatest can bring you a lot of joy. For example, I upgraded my Ryzen 5 2600X to a Ryzen 5 3600 at launch week in July of 2019, just because I was really excited about the new chiplet approach and combining 7 nanometer chiplets with 12 nanometer chiplets and all of that and it just amazed me and I wanted to have it. You can't really put a price on a hobby. As you can see, there's a lot more to it than just comparing price and performance of different memory standards. I think you should take into account your complete system costs, you should think about your possible upgrade path and then you should take into account how much you gain from getting new technology. I don't need a new system right now, but if I would get Alder Lake, I'm pretty sure I would get it with DDR5. Not because of the performance, but just because I like new tech. That's why I started this channel. And no matter how you choose, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe for more content and see you next time.